Good morning. Good morning. Hi, babies. Hey. Hello, friends. Look at this beautiful day. It's so nice out today. Today, I'm going to pick some of my zucchini and get busy making some stuff with zucchini because I am overloaded with it. So let's go to the greenhouse and get picking. Well, the tomatoes are almost finished. There are some more, but they're near done. The carrots got planted a little late, but I do have lots of zucchini. So that's what we are going to pick today. I know I saw another one right here. Three. And there's still some little guys in here. We're gonna leave them. We're gonna leave them and take these three. And I have, I think at least, three or four more in the house and we're going to make stuff with zucchini today. We can't let any of this stuff go to waste. So if you want to join me, I'm going to be making all things zucchini. So let's go. I know that I was telling you guys the other day how my strawberries were doing amazing. <laughs> they don't look amazing to you guys, but they look amazing to me because I haven't been here all summer. I've been in the hospital. And so I got finally got them transplanted in. So next year, hopefully this bed will be blooming and beautiful. And that's probably why I'm so excited about the veggies and the stuff that I am getting because everything was put in really, really late. So um, I have got all of my tomatoes and zucchini pulled out of the greenhouse all the stuff that wasn't having any more veggies on it and I'm going to put that in the compost and now I'm going to pick out these tomatoes because it's too late for them and the watermelon that didn't have enough time to germinate but next time well they germinated but not to flower next year is going to be a different story and I can't wait that sky. Isn't that beautiful? So I also picked the last of the tomatoes that were red because last night we had a bear on the camera and so he's scoping out the place so I don't want to leave anything that he's going to eat out. guys welcome back to my kitchen my name is Angela for those who, who don't know me welcome to Buckridge Homestead today we're gonna be making stuff with zucchini I have tons of zucchini here from my garden and some a friend gave us so today we're gonna be making four recipes using zucchini so I hope you're ready we're gonna be shredding a lot of zucchini today <laughs> and in case you haven't been here before, I also want to just let you know that I have recently had a heart transplant. And so if I seem kind of out of breath, that is why. And I am documenting my journey. This month, it is almost, wow, almost four and a half months since I've had my transplant. So I'm pretty excited that I can be back here in my kitchen like this. I'm so so I wouldn't have thought that I ever would be back. So I'm so thankful and grateful to be here. So I hope you'll enjoy coming along with me today and making lots of stuff with zucchini. Okay, so recipe number one is going to be a zucchini with white sauce chicken lasagna. So I've got my pan sprayed and I'm gonna get shredding this zucchini up 
because I have to check, I'm not sure how many cups we need. I think we need about two cups of zucchini, but I'm gonna get shredding a lot of it for all of these recipes. Okay, so I've got my zucchini here all cut and split down the middle. And now what I wanna do is I want to scoop out all the seeds and set those aside. I'm gonna save them for the chickens because they're gonna love that. And I put my hair up so I don't get any hair in anything. I <laughs> tend to leave a trail. So I'm gonna scoop these out. And if you're following along with me, save your biggest zucchini. Mine would be that one for the last recipe. Okay, so I know I said to save that last zucchini, but I end up making so many recipes and ended up with so much leftover grated veggie that I end up having to freeze it. So I'm just gonna tell you what I do with it. I cut it into three pieces and then cut those three pieces in half. And then I put them in the oven drizzled in olive oil for at least half an hour, 45 minutes. Then in the meantime, I fry up a couple pounds of ground beef or maybe even a pound and fill that, mix that with cream cheese, garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. And then what I do is take out those zucchini out of the oven and I fill them with the meat sauce and top it with cheddar and mozzarella. And then I put it back in there until it's all bubbly and crispy, probably about 400 degrees because I want the cheese all super crispy on the top. It is so good, you have to try it. I always tend to use Mrs. Dash garlic powder, onion powder. Okay, so I have prepared all of the zucchini. They are all hollowed out and I kept the skin on. I have washed everything thoroughly and now I'm gonna grate it. And I'll show you this handy dandy grater that I bought before my transplant because I couldn't even grate one potato. It was that bad or I would have to go sit down. I would peel one potato about that big and I would have to go sit down. So I got this and I have no affiliation with this thing at all, but I absolutely love it. And it grates like a hot diggity. And I'm so glad I got it because it slices and grates and it does a bunch of things. I'm not even sure of all the things it does, but I'm gonna use it today. It's gonna make everything go a lot faster for me. So let's get grating. Okay, so I've got my grater inside of a little container just so that I can catch all of this stuff. And you'll see how easy this is. And this will get grated in no time. And this thing just makes it so much more easy for me because of my hands. Okay, so now I have my big pile of zucchini all shredded that actually made quite a lot. I've got one large white onion peeled and a few cloves of garlic and I'm going to pop them into my food processor. So I'm just putting in my garlic and I've diced up my onion and I was going to mention before that I did all this zucchini here by hand with that grater because I like the how it thick the nice little grates get but you can also use your food processor you don't have to manually grate anything that looks good okay I'm just gonna set this aside and I'm gonna get our roux started on the stove. So I've got about half a cup of butter right here. I'm gonna put the burner on and I'm gonna get that melting. And then I've got my milk measured out. I've got four cups of milk, one cup of flour. I've got my onions here and garlic and I've got nutmeg which I'm just gonna put a pinch of. And so I'm, now I'm just gonna make like a roux and then we're going to add some of the other ingredients. Okay, if you haven't made a roux before, it's also called just a white sauce. And you put the fat in first. 
So I've got our butter all melted. I'm going to add the cup of flour. And this is kind of a weird pot that I have. The, this part gets really hot, so I have to be careful. So I'm just going to add that flour, and it's going to dry all, look like this, be all kind of dry. And make, you're going to whisk it until we get like a paste. And you can add a drizzle of oil if you want. Girls, shh, shh. never mind. I got four chihuahuas out. So there's usually always something they think's going on, but really nothing's going on. Okay, and now we're going to add our our milk, just a little bit at a time, because we don't want any lumps. Okay, so the secret to the white sauce is that you want to add your flour very slowly, or sorry, your milk very slowly. You've got your melted butter and you whisk your flour in to make a paste. You can always add more butter or more or oil so that it's pasty. And then you wanna just add a drizzle of milk, whisk it. Drizzle of milk, whisk it. Otherwise you're gonna get lumps. So I've got my white sauce here, but if you do make lumps, the trick is you can strain it and still get all your good stuff out of it and then whisk the stuff that's the lumps and put it all back in. So this is getting nice and thick already. I'm actually thinking I might need to add a little bit more milk, but we'll see. So now I'm just gonna stir in my onions and my garlic. And I'll leave any extra in there. I'm gonna whisk that up and I'm gonna add just like a pinch of nutmeg, probably a tea table, a teaspoon of pepper, and probably two teaspoons of salt. And then I'm gonna whisk that up. And it's, it's already getting pretty thick. So I'm actually gonna go get some milk. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. So I'm probably adding about three quarters of a cup more, just because mine was quite thick and I want it to still add the chicken. So now you're gonna go get your shredded chicken and you can shred apart a barbecue chicken. You can save last night's supper, pull a chicken, pull the chicken apart, or if you do like I do, whenever I make a chicken or a turkey, I peel all the chicken off and I throw it in the freezer in a bag. And that's what I'm using today. I just pulled out some of my leftovers from one of my suppers and I'm gonna use that. So I've measured off probably about three cups of shredded chicken and I'm gonna add that next. So I'm just going to sprinkle that in here. Stir that around. That's about the consistency that you want your sauce. And it will, sh it will, I shredded mine up kind of like keeping big chunks, but um, do it however you like. And I have a combination of white and brown meat, whatever was left over will work perfectly. Mmm, that smells so good. So now I'm going to put my oven on at three. 75 and then I might toast it up to 400 when it gets closer to time being done so if the top is crispy but we'll see we'll see how it how it is so now I stirred in two cans of canned mushroom because that's what I had upstairs and that's what the recipe calls for but you can use anything you want I dehydrated mushrooms in the in the fall and those would be perfect to use in here so just whatever you have on hand or if you don't if you're not a mushroom person you can leave it out So 
So I'm just using regular old oven ready needles. These are just great value brand and I like the oven ready because it is, um, you don't have to pre-cook it. I don't like it when you have to pre-do the noodles as much because I find that they get kind of extra soggy and I like how firm these stay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just put my very first layer down. I'm gonna try not to get, I'm trying to get mostly liquid and some chicken mostly some of that down just for our first kind of base layer here. So then we're going to take our noodles and you just put it together however you want. As long as you have something on the bottom, you're good to go. So easy. We almost have our first recipe finished. We're just layering this. So I'm going to put another layer of the meat sauce, kind of like a heavy-ish layer. Spread that all around. And now I'm going to just take from my pile, so that's probably a cup already. A cup right like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of cheese. Now today I'm using a mixture of cheddar and mozzarella, just because that's what I like. But this white lasagna technically only calls for the mozzarella. But I always put cheddar in it just because that's what we like so much. So I've got, now I'm gonna add my next layer of noodle. And you can see this comes together rather quickly. And I'm just doing the opposite. Oops. Dropped one in my pot. So there we go. Now I'm going to do that again with another quite thick layer of sauce. Oh, my pan. I don't want to have my pan too crazy full. I've used one of my smaller pans because I wasn't sure how... I couldn't remember if the, this used my huge pan or not, but this just seems to be my regular pan, plus I added a little extra milk. So I'm just going to use the rest of my sauce now. It's the perfect amount for one meal. If you wanted, you could double it and make two, and that would be ideal for freezing because they do freeze okay. I'm not like a huge fan of... I'm going to put a little cheese down first and then some zucchini and then some more cheese. Mmm, that looks so good. It's going to be delicious. Now I'm going to use about another cup. So it's about two cups in total for the whole recipe, but you could put a little more in or less if you just had one or two little zucchinis. It just adds some nice vegetable, some green vegetable. And I just love the taste of zucchini. It's definitely one of our faves. Okay, now, typically, I'm, I don't think I have enough. Okay, we're not gonna do that. This is too much. Now I'm going to add another layer of cheese. If you had enough sauce left, you could make another mini one of these in a smaller pan. But I've ran out of the white chicken sauce, so I'm not gonna use I'm not gonna have enough to make two of them, but that's okay, because I always make too much. <laughs> I'm used to having lots, all the kids around and cooking for tons of kids, and I still do that. But it's a good thing, because I end up getting to freeze everything and having lots of leftovers. So there, that was the perfect amount. I grated three cups of cheese all together, and that is perfect. So we're gonna just go and pop that in the oven. And I'm going to bake that for approximately an hour and a half at 375. And then we will check on it in an hour. OK, 
Okay guys, so I popped that in the oven and I'm gonna give it about 45 minutes or an hour and then I'm gonna check on it. And like I said, it might crisp up the top if the cheese isn't melted. So we will see what happens when in about 45 minutes, but we got our first item done. So if you are coming on the cook along with me today, I meant to say that while I was grating the cheese, there's the rest of the cheese, two bars, two of the regular like bars, whatever size they are. We may as well grate them all at the same time because we're gonna be using them in another recipe. But first we are going to be making our second recipe coming up next. So I am just gave the kitchen a little quick tidy and um, we'll be ready to go. So do you think we're making a dent in our zucchini yet? That's a lot. I don't think so. <laughs> we better keep going. So we're having a little rest time here because that's how I roll now. I have to rest in between um, stuff just to keep putting my feet up in between cooking and baking because that's what I love to do. So that's what I'm going to do with my life, <laughs> among other things that I enjoy. So um, I can't wait to make our next thing. We are going to be making, if you haven't seen my playlist cooking, on that playlist there's a homemade mushroom soup with honey beer bread. And so we're gonna be using the same recipe today, except we're gonna be making it with zucchini. So it's gonna be so yummy. Hey buddy. So I'm taking a little breather and you should too. Listen to the signs of your body if you're tired. And that reminds me, I was gonna make a video because so many people have asked me about, well, what were your signs and symptoms that you had? that you knew and so the, the reason if you didn't know I had a heart transplant and the reason that I had to have a heart transplant is because I've been diagnosed with a terminal illness that eats away at your organs and it had deposited so much proteins in my heart that it caused my heart to not be able to pump it made it so stiff so it turns it like almost like a rock and it does that to all your many of your organs. So um, listening to your body, signs and symptoms, that's so important, so important. Anyway, one of the things I need to do more is rest. And the reason that I use a lot of gadgets and different things is because my wrists, one of the signs of the disease is carpal tunnel syndrome. I don't know. Um, I don't want to scare anybody because many, many people have carpal tunnel, but that is one of the signs that that you have this specific disease that I have. And um, so my hands don't bend. My hands don't bend very far. So I have to be now because of this and the disease puts proteins in your nerves. So that's another part that is kind of sucks. So. I do what I can when I can and when I'm in the mood and that's why when I do get in the kitchen I make tons of stuff and I get lots of stuff done and I pop it in the freezer. So I'm just going to have a little break for 5-10 minutes and you should join me too and then we'll get on to our next, our next recipe. It's going to be fun and it's going to go so good with the lasagna. So I'm just going to, this is looking really good, and I'm just going to add a little bit of tin foil and put that on the top to keep the cheese from getting too brown too quickly. So let's start our next recipe. Okay, you ready? This one's really easy. All we have to do is, okay, we're going to start off with three cups of flour. This is a great one bowl recipe, half a cup, one cup, half a cup, two cups, half a cup, three cups, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and now what we're going to do is add 
a tablespoon of baking powder. And you guys know I never measure, but I was using a tablespoon here. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, and a teaspoon of sea salt. Now, I'm just gonna mix that, combine that really, really gently. And then in the middle of this, oh, I almost forgot. I wanna use a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay, so now we're gonna kinda make a well in the middle. And we are going to put a quarter cup of honey which is pretty much the rest of this bottle. So I'm just gonna hold it, let that dump in. Maybe that's about a quarter. Mm. And then we're gonna add about a quarter cup of butter, melted butter. Can you guys hear that beeping? I think that's my water system in the basement beeping. I'll have to let Hubs know about that because it must mean that needs something needs changed. Okay, and now, of course, the one and only beer we're going to use around here. This is the only beer around here. Is this brand? But um, you can use any kind you want. Any kind you want. It can be non-alcohol, anything. The alcohol actually, it won't be alcoholy. And like when it's cooked, it won't taste like alcohol or anything like that. It just gives it this really nice flavor. And so I'm just stirring that up. And it just makes like a nice rough dough. Now I don't want to stir it too much now because now I'm going to add my one cup of cheddar cheese. So that's half a cup. And another half a cup. And now I'm going to add about half a cup, one cup. I didn't push it down or it would have been about correct. See, because if I squish it down. Okay, so you can see that that's about a cup and a half of zucchini. And then I'm gonna give that another stir and just wanna incorporate everything. I don't want to over mix it because this dough, you don't want to start kneading it or anything. It's just a quick bread. So I'll incorporate that. And in the meantime, I'm going to get out my loaf pan and I'm going to spray it with some non-stick cooking spray. Okay, wasn't that so easy? Now I've got my pan that I greased and I'm just going to put my dough into here. See, it's such a nice, soft dough. Mmm. That looks so good. Now I'm just gonna kinda squish it into the pan. And give my hand a little rinse here. Because I wanna put some cheese on the top. Not look yummy. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna add a little bit of grated cheddar. Having a lot of cheese tonight. Okay, and now all we gotta do is the oven's already warm from the lasagna, but this requires like 350. So I'm just going to turn the oven down on my lasagna a little bit and pop this in and uh, it can be in there at the same time. I almost forgot, the key important part is to drizzle melted butter on the top. Mm. And you can brush that if you want with a pastry brush. Mm. 
or you can just use the back of the spoon like I am. Perfect, now it's ready to go in the oven for approximately 45 minutes. The lasagna is done. Doesn't that look great? So it's still a little bubbly, so I'm just gonna let that cool and then we'll slice into it. The bread ended up taking approximately one hour and five minutes. Just because when I put the knife in the middle, it wasn't quite done. So look how yummy that is. Mmm, it's gonna be so good. So there you go guys, two things down and you can even serve them together if you're not zucchinied out. <laughs> Um, we're definitely not. We're going to enjoy the lasagna and the bread shortly. Hey friends! Okay, I'm back and now we're on our third recipe. We are going to make zucchini. Let's not call them cakes, let's call them fritters. Zucchini, but I call them kind of pancakes. <laughs> So it's, I'll, it's like a potato pancake, but with zucchini. So good, so easy, and you can make a really quick um, supper with these. So let's get busy making our zucchini pancakes. Okay, these are super simple, you guys. There's not, not like a crazy amount of ingredients. It's really basic and you can whip them up really fast and they're so good. So all you need is I'm gonna give you the ingredients, but I'm also gonna link the recipe below, the ingredients and the exact measurements because I don't measure, but I eyeball a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna give you approximately as we go. So I've got approximately two cups zucchini, which I'm gonna dump into my bowl. This is so easy and these are so tasty. I love them really crispy. The other thing is, Parmesan cheese, and I probably have, I don't know, at least half a cup there, half a cup. Salt and pepper, flour, and good old eggs. Now you can use your, of course, your own farm eggs or whatever you like. Um, so, I'm going to show you closer and let's put this together and get them frying. They're so good, they'll take no time. And then all you really need if you're preparing it for supper is like a side of sausages or um, it, it's a great side dish. So you can put it with whatever you like. And especially if you're stuck coming up with something for a side. They're also really good for breakfast, but because I love potato pancakes, um, but yeah, what do you call them? I call them potato pancakes or zucchini pancakes because I consider potato pancakes from potato the same thing. But um, do you call them fritters or do you call them pancakes? I think I'm gonna go with zucchini pancakes just because that's what we call it in our, our, in our house. Okay, so here I've got my two cups of zucchini and I'm going to add one cup of, a little bit more because that was pretty scant, one cup of flour, and I'm just going to stir that around. And I've chopped my, or grated my zucchini pretty coarse with that chopper that I showed you because another, I just, I don't like too thin zucchini for this because it kind of would go more mushy. So now I'm going to just add about a teaspoon of black pepper, um, about a teaspoon of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt today. Mm, I love the I always have, even as a kid. <laughs> I'm going to add, let's see how much this actually is. 
of Parmesan. Half a cup of Parmesan. Okay, there's a little bit left. Because I have more zucchini, so I can make more as well. Because I got a big eater in my house. <laughs> and I'm going to do one. I also have another egg here that, two, that broke on me. Three eggs. You could probably get away with two, but I like, that's your binding agent, so I like what's egg. And they stay together better. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir this up and get it all incorporated. I also want to add a little bit of, um, this is my homemade dehydrated onion powder, but any onion powder will do. Or if, see I have a finicky family that doesn't like the taste of big onions chopped up. I do, I love it. But So we'll just use this kind of onion, about a tablespoon, just to kind of hide it better. So here's my mix, and you just want to add a couple tablespoons of water. If, unless your zucchini is really, really juicy already, don't have to bother. Um, but mine was quite, quite grated into like, quite like little stick type grates. So it wasn't like as juicy as normal. So you just go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of water till it's this consistency. And it's looking really good. So now we're just gonna go over to the stove and put some oil in the frying pan and get them going. All right, so now I've got my frying pan here all clean and I'm going to drizzle some oil in my pan. I'm using extra virgin olive oil, but I also love to use avocado oil. Okay. Once this starts getting warm, I'm going to create my little pancakes. Now I wanna kinda not have them too thick. So I'm gonna play with them a little bit. Until they're about like that. And not too, too much oil, but enough that it's gonna fry them. I heard you can also do these in the air fryer if you want them lower fat, which is a really neat idea. I haven't tried that, so if anyone tries it, please let me know, that sounds really interesting. I don't use the air fryer tons. I know some people are obsessed with it, and I want to use it more, I just, never think of it actually I always just so have it to to make everything the regular way I guess I have no I don't know why I don't I should try some more. okay they're all sizzling up and I'm just fixing this last little guy here it's a little bit too thick yeah, it's on medium high. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna go get a, a platter or a plate with some paper towels on it so when I take them out, I can lay it onto something. Okay, let's peek at these. Oh, they're getting kind of golden. Getting there, I think I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. This burner tends to be pretty hot. Let's see. Yeah, that looks about perfect. I'm gonna flip one. Let's see that one. Ah. Yeah, those look nice. Now I'm gonna leave them on here 
I want them to be totally done in the middle. I don't want them doughy or anything. Oh, those look nice and golden. That looks really good. They smell so good. Mmm. A little bit of fresh dehydrated onion. Makes it just good. And the cheese, the little bit of Parmesan cheese just adds that little extra bit. I flip these one more time and they look so yummy. That's how I like them nice and crispy. So those are pretty much done and I'm just going to keep putting my um, mixture into the frying pan until I'm all done. Mm, look how great these turned out. These are so good. And all you need to do is get out some sour cream or something and put a dollop on there. So there you go, guys. You can easily make your own zucchini pancakes. Okay, so now we're going to make zucchini spice cake. And it is so delicious. It has a cream cheese icing on it. It's super easy to make. It doesn't actually taste that, take that long to bake. And mmm. It makes it, this is really good if you're going somewhere and you need some, some sort of dessert to bring. It's delicious. You'll get lots of compliments. Okay, so I've got baking soda, baking powder, some salt, some oil, homemade vanilla. I'm using this seasoning called gingerbread. It's just because it's like a cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, clove kind of mix. But if you have cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, that's good enough. And then here's my regular cinnamon and nutmeg because I don't have that much left of this. My zucchini, some fresh eggs, and brown sugar and white flour. And I'm really excited to get to use my new pan. Like, I just love this white stoneware pan. So that's all you really need. I'll link the ingredients below in the description box. And, um, Everything will be down there if you miss a step or an ingredient if I go too fast. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we're going to put a cup of oil in our mixer. Half a cup, and I'm just using this organic extra virgin olive oil that you can use avocado oil, regular oil, you know, whatever you, whatever you prefer. And I'm just gonna, now I'm gonna add my three eggs. Oh, these are beautiful. So I wonder what the weather's like where you are. It's really starting to be fall here today. It's obvious like yellow leaves are falling and it, it's so beautiful my birthday's in september and it's september and it always reminds me of falling leaves i love that so now i'm just going to mix this up a little bit oh, i guess i should plug it in and make it so it has a nice froth I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. It calls for, wow, one teaspoon of, one teaspoon of vanilla. This is my homemade vanilla, mm. which I made from real vanilla beans. And I just put it in this jar that I got. Um, and I used probably two tablespoons of that. Now I'm going to put in approximately one and a half cups of brown sugar. Open this. This recipe has no white sugar in it. It doesn't have to be packed. It's a really nice caramelly color. Now I'm just going to add a 
two cups of zucchini that I measured out. Blend that in there. Just till it's incorporated. It is fine. Okay, now we're going to add two teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of cinnamon, I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and then I'm using this spice blend that basically is just cloves, allspice, cinnamon and nutmeg it's just I don't have all cloves ground so I'm just going to use the rest of that there's probably a tablespoon altogether that I had left it just gives it a really nice that almost Christmas smell if you will I <laughs> don't scare anybody already but that smell of like mmm so good it's the same spices exactly that I use in my um, really deep and delicious um, carrot cake just mix those spices up a little bit. And all we have to do now is add our flour. Mm, the smell in here is like almost like gingerbread man, I dare say. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put in two and a half of flour. So there's half. One. One and a half. Two. Two and a half. Okay, and there's some zucchini wound around. Gently um, mix this together, but we don't want to mix it over mix it and make it tough. We just we want to make sure it's really moist. So that's probably good. That is probably good. I don't want to over mix it at all. My hands are clean, freshly washed. <laughs> And I'm just going to wipe off my beater. I do not leave my beater full of dough. I like to use it. My grandma taught me that. Always use every little last bit. And she said that the scraper is your best friend. You can get off all of the edges. So there we go. Okay, we're just going to get this in the pan now. Okay, we're going to pop that in our pan that I greased, and I've got the oven preheating at 350. Mmm, smells good. evenly so now we're just waiting for the oven to preheat and we'll pop it in Okay, so I'm going to change my um, mixer attachment to the whipping one, and I'm going to put in 
half a cup butter. That's like warm room temperature. And the eight ounce package of cream cheese first. So I wanna whip these things up first. So I'm gonna blend that. And then I will add the salt and the icing sugar. Okay, that looks perfect. It's mixed really nicely. I forgot to mention that I added the vanilla as well. So now all we have to add is our icing sugar. So we're going to add approximately sweeten it I'd rather it just be a little bit less the recipe calls for four but I don't want to do four I'm gonna see okay let's check on that oh my gotta taste this yep I'm not gonna add the fourth cup of icing sugar that tastes perfect so I'm just gonna clean this up and set it aside and when our beautiful beautiful um, cake is done we will let it cool and then we'll be able to ice it hey buddy Are you what you smell it don't you ooh that looks good it's not quite done it's gonna need a few more minutes these are some chicken drumsticks that I have in here to go with the zucchini pancakes that I'm gonna heat up later so that's another idea something you can cook with the zucchini, with these yummy zucchini pancakes. Mm. So I'm going to turn this back off, the timer back on for like six more minutes and see what happens. The icing is all finished and ready. Oh, look who's here. Hey guys. Hi. You can see me. That's so funny. They like this little strip down here because it's greener. <laughs> Hey buddy, taking good care of the ladies? That's too funny. So this is all ready and we're gonna put it on our zucchini cake when it cools. Okay, the buzzer's going off. Let's check on our cake now. Oh, it feels like it's coming. I think it's done. I'm just gonna put it on for two more minutes. So in total, that's 30 seven minutes it's been in there for. Mm. See how the top is bouncing right back? That's done. It smells so good in here you guys if you could only smell it. I just want to also say that you see me doing all these things and cooking and um, walking around the yard and doing you know normal like stuff again and Sometimes that's not what people expect when they see someone with a terminal disease. They expect them to be really sick and, and um, I don't know, laying around. I'm not sure. But what you don't see is all the behind scenes stuff. The times when I am exhausted. The times when I can't do anything for three days but lay on the couch. The time where my blood pressure is so out of whack that it's awful. But what I can say is you can have hope because I, last year at this time, I was near my deathbed. I could barely breathe. I could barely walk five more steps. Um, if it weren't for the amazing team at St. Paul's Hospital, I wouldn't even be here right now. 
So for somebody with that's super passionate about all these things I love doing, I'm such a multi-passionate person, cooking and baking and crafting and making soap and um, journaling and working and being outside and animals and chickens and farming and homesteading and canning and like you name it, I wanna do it or have done it or wanted or love to do it. But I can't just do all the things. I just pick and choose what I want to do and how much energy I have that day and some days I'm like a ball of energy and other days I'm done for a few days and I can't do anything so I just want you guys to keep in it real that um, if I like say I do all this cooking then I don't I can't go grocery shopping I can't go do anything else that day that's my one thing that I've done and I'm exhausted so I just want you to know that behind the scenes it's actually um, I'm amazed at, that I can do what I can do already. Uh, I'm so grateful that I was able to have chemotherapy and, well, I'm going to be starting it again soon and have had my heart transplant, but to be able to be here and in my kitchen cooking, <laughs> I am so lucky. So I just want you to remember that not everything is what it seems. Okay, the icing is all on and our zucchini spice cake with cream cheese frosting looks amazing and it's going to taste amazing. So there you go. We got the whole meal ready. So thank you guys so much for being here with me making four different zucchini recipes. We made the zucchini pancakes. We made the spice zucchini with cream cheese icing cake. We made the, um, wow, we made so many zucchini things, I forgot what we made. We made this beautiful, cheesy zucchini honey beer bread, and we made the zucchini white lasagna. So I really hope that you got some inspiration to try one of these recipes. If you do, definitely let me know, I'd love to hear. So thanks so much. If you love this recipe, you'll love my cooking playlist where there's lots more recipes that I go through step by step. Have a great day, friends, and we'll see you next time.